Hi folks, welcome back. Today is going to be a little bit different as I'm not going to be doing anything on the planer today. I've got some uh, work for Don that needs to be done before Don commits Harry Carey. You see, a couple of months ago, Don called me and said, the project's over. I can't go any farther. My nut is messed up. I can't buy one. Nobody makes them. I said, what do you mean your nut's messed up? And he said, the shaper table nut, it's all torn up. I said, well, we'll make a new one. And he says, well, I can't make a new one. And I said, but I can. So, I'm going to help old Don out. I have personally saved Don's life. I knew he was just so distraught over it. This is the nut in question. It's kind of a deep nut. If you look at it, it's got this little uh, well right here. It's all made out of cast iron. It fits on the side of the shaper table arm like this. It's got a big lead screw that goes through. And oil drips into this little cavity right here and then on into the nut. Well, apparently that doesn't work very well. If you look inside here, see if you can get up in there close. Those are in pretty bad shape. So, what are we going to do about it? Well, there's three things I thought of. First off, boring this out, putting a new cylinder inside it, and threading that cylinder. If you do that, though, you only have about an eighth inch of material right here on each side. And this cast iron, I think it'll crack on it. Second step would be to make a bigger cylinder and then bore a saddle into this nut and replace the top half of it. But by the time you do all that and attach it and it could break, why not just make a new one? So that's what we're going to do. And I'm not going to use my manual machines. I'm going to use old M8 behind me. M8 is a 1995 or 96 Bridgeport cork cut 22. Now, I've had CNC old machines for quite a few years now. The last one I had was a Boss 5 that I rescued and rebuilt and ripped all the electronics off and modernized it. I sold it to a friend because, personally, I got tired of babysitting it. Uh, it didn't have a tool changer. Load M8 has got a 22 position tool changer. Also got has flood cooling and when you're making things I can walk away and let it do its thing and it doesn't make a huge mess. So that's what we're going to use today. Now this is cast iron. It's not what I could consider the best material to make a nut out of. So I had Don get on the internet. I gave him some leads of places to look. And he bought us this piece of bronze, specially formulated for making nuts. Does real good. And out of this piece of bronze, well, I took it over and I, I milled these little flats in it so I could hold it in a vise. And out of this, we're going to take everything that doesn't look like that away. And then take that part and put it on a four jaw chuck and bore it and thread it. This is a tough boring job. This is a three inch long nut with a very small diameter so the, the threading bar has got to be small. It's an Acme left hand nut so everything's backwards and it's tough. We've got a carbide threading bar because you get to a small size bar, vibrations and everything, carbide's just better. Anyway, as I said, it's a tough nut. Get it? Get it? Now, I'm an old nut, and I don't do a lot of threading lately in the last couple of years, so I want to practice. And that is a $145 piece of browns. This can't practice on it. So what I've done is go to my old standby. This is machinist wax. 
If you don't know what machinist wax is, listen up. This is a good stuff. This is a high temperature wax. It's very hard. It's almost, you'd swear it was plastic. It cuts and machines very nice. And I can duplicate this nut in plastic and have a test piece to play with the thread around for cheap. The best part about this stuff is if you make a mistake or when you're through with it, you take it and you put it in a pot and you melt it back down and cast it to any shape you want. You reuse it over and over and over. Uh, this is probably six or seven years old. Uh, I think I paid like $75 for a two foot stick of it. God knows what it'll be today. Anyway, this is very gift forgiving also. And I bought my torque cut 22 about three years ago and most of the stuff that I do is 2D with one bit. And so I'm rusty. And so this gives me a chance to practice without spending a lot of money. And it's a good thing. Here's my first practice piece. I was setting up the tool changer and making sure all the tools are the right length. And something happened. And even with my hand on the stop button, I wasn't fast enough. Second tool came down and made a nice little crater in the top. It was a hundred dollar ball-in carbide mill bit. And luckily I was using this to test it with because when it hit it, it split it open. The bit's fine. This is fine once I remelt it and make it again, a uh, hole again. So nothing was lost. And that's the great thing about machinist likes. You can prove out your programs, you can practice and do it over and over again. A long time ago when aluminum was cheap, I'd just make that out of aluminum be okay. Now, old M8 uses a computer program to machine this part. I have to draw the part. I use a computer program called Bobcad. Now, a lot of people don't like Bobcad. and It's got a bad reputation from years ago. In fact, when I first got started with Bobcad, I was very hesitant to call them. I didn't want to be bothered like they did. When you ordered Bobcat or inquired in the beginning, you really needed to have a burner phone, an assumed identity, and a fake address to uh, talk to them because they were going to hound you to death. Well, I called them, talked to them, and said, I don't want to be hounded, and they've been very good. Haven't called me unless I needed. And this is about the fourth version of the program that I'm using. Now, M8 is a four-axis capable CNC machine. Uh, I haven't ever put the, uh, the fourth axis in it because cards did, and uh, Don's going to be working at that for me. So hopefully when we need it, we'll have it. This is a pic of the program here, and this is the nut that I drew. It's pretty good. There's some differences. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to zoom in and see if this works. Now, if you can notice on my rendition here, there's a few differences. In mine, well, oh, excuse me, on this one, this is a sloped surface. This is a rounded surface, and the back here is also sloped a little bit. Well, that's hard to hold in a four-jaw chuck, so I made a few design changes. The base is flat, as it is normally, but then I put a flat here, one on top, and one on the other side. And that'll let me uh, uh, take and clamp it in the, the chuck real well. I'm not going to do the boring in here. I'm going to bore it on the lathe. Anyway, this is Bobcat. It's a cool program. You can do three 3D drawing, 2D drawing, used to put houses on it. Uh, the neat thing is it's got a uh, simulation program. 
Now this is running off my new computer. I just finished building this last night and it is lightning fast. My other computer over here would have taken three minutes to load this in. I'm going to turn off the tool pass. Just hit the run button. Let it work. This isn't speeded up. This is real time on my machine. Well, on this program, it's not going to run it that fast on the machine. Interchange tools. I've left about ten thousandths on most of the places to start cleaning it up. Ta da Now that makes things easy when you want to practice. Now I could take this thing and could have made 20 of these by the time I'm through with messing with this this time because I'm old and forget things and I have to relearn how to do things and I'm dealing with a 25 year old machine that uses G code that I don't live, breathe, and eat anymore. So it took me a while. Plus another problem with my computer program was when you buy Bobcat, they give you an option of which engine to use in the program. One of them costs about $2,000 more than this one did. But they put all of the tool paths available for both engines in the software, and when I was trying to get this to work nice, I'd be picking tool paths that I didn't have. It let me pick them and then by the time I figured out what was going on, I was ready to pull my hair out and I don't have much left. But this, once I've gone through all this, I look at it as a learning experience. When you can walk up to a machine and program it and be done quickly, then it's really, really useful. But you got to practice, and heck, that's a perfect thing to practice on, especially since I want two practice copies. And so that's where the wax comes in. I will be putting this in the machine pretty quick and cutting it down. Anyway, let's go to the machine. Or we can sit here and watch rockets being launched. I like that too. No, go to work, Steve. Bad Steve. Hi, folks. The night's the night. Sorry I'm yelling at you, but it's kind of noisy in here with old M8 running. Tonight's the night. I've got all the programming done. It's rough. But it works. We're going to make this nut out of bronze. But first, we're going to use some machine wax to make sure everything's working fine before I mess up this $145 piece of bronze. Old M8's back there in the background. I've got the spindle running on it. It's kind of hard to see out of this camera. Let me get you over quicker closer one of the two 
don't know if you can even see in there. Can you? I got the old spindle running on M8. Right now about 500 RPMs kind of loosening it up and warming things up. Here's a control panel. Got to do a few more things to get it all set up, but I was letting the machine warm up a little bit. Is it hot where you guys are? I was out working today again outside. My truck said it was 110, and I believe it. I was sitting on a concrete driveway putting in a security system on a gate. That's why I haven't been making a lot of videos lately. I've been outside working. Time I get through, I'm pooped. And then I have to go to play rehearsal. So, I haven't forgot you. Right now, old M8's doing its thing. I'm gonna get the little camera so you can see better. Hope you can hear me okay. Right now, I've got the spindle running about 500 RPMs, been warming up, and I'm moving the table around. As you can see, I've been making some mess with my wax. I think we've got everything dialed up so I can make my first test piece that I can use for the rest of the project. This is all the controls right now. What I need to do is remember how I was doing things and uh, see if we can get it to go over and move to uh, zero point. Number two is what I want to hit down here. And that allows me to move this to zero. I've got my work offset set for this tool here, zero and zero, enter. Now, when I hit the plus button down here, it should move to that. I'm letting the tool run, because last time I did this, I split a piece of wax in half. All right, let's see what happens. That's what I was afraid of. Dumb Steve. Okay. When I told that to go down there, it went there. You can't stop it, it goes so fast. So what I need to do is, is set my work set down just a little bit. It shows that zero, zero, zero. I want to move it down about 20 thousandths of an inch. The best way i found is to get out of this and go to the tool. And we're going to have it going at 500 RPMs again. All right, let's change that. Go to a thousand. We want tool number six. And then we want it number three to go uh, clockwise. Then we're going to hit plus. And that started the tool spinning. Now I'm going to try to get out of here and go into the uh, setup mode, F3. I'm going to 1 for work shifts. And I want G54, X is 0, Y is 0, Z. Now, hold up, screwed up again. I'm going to escape this. What I want to do is I want to jog this down in zero down to where I want to go. So I'm going to go to the, the, the jog menu, three. We're going to jog Z, so we hit number seven. And then we want it to go slow, so we're going to hit number two. Now I've got Z and two going slow. Then I'm going to run over here to this little jog dial. 
This is what makes this machine so easy to run manually. It's just right here. And then I'm going to go down 20,000. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight. Just check and make sure it don't run into the vice. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay. And here's 20. Okay. Now I want to exit the jog menu. I want to go back to work shifts. I'm going to go G54, enter. X is zero, that's good. Y is zero, okay. And now it says that Z is at minus Twenty thousands. So I'm going to make that my new zero, and then escape, and that's that's it. Now I'm going to go back to jog three. I want to go jog Z. I want to go fast. What I'm doing is I'm raising it up out of the workpiece. Now this one's got a little, if I want to, I can go F5 and go to a clear point. And raise it up and gets it out of the way. All right. Now we've got all that done. We want to set up and load the program. And F3. The thing looks good there. F4. Let's escape out of it. F4 run. Over here is how I get to run a larger program than this poor thing can handle. It's limited on memory. This is its A drive, which I have replaced with this drive up here so I can use a thumb drive. That was a learning experience. So what I need to do is set DNC to yes. And it's going to ask me to load it if I want to run it from... Uh, it's, it's reminding me that I've got to do this. I can run it from a macro or I can run it from the disk which is now that drive up there. So we're going to hit 1. And then we need to change the path to A drive, so we hit escape. And then we type in A. Just same, this is all DOS, remember. And hit enter. And that went and started reading that floppy. We like A, we want this, we want to go down to that file. It has loaded the program, come alive up there, and now we should be able to run it. It's getting ready to run at the speed.
A little farther along now. Show you another feature of this machine that I really like. These two little buttons here. Right now, I'm going uh, 79 inches per second, and then it slows down to go around those sharp curvers. That's the feed rate. Up here, said the spindle is hitting about 32.56, which is. 65% of the speed that it was programmed for. By adjusting these two little knobs, I can increase that 75, I'm up 3756. That's the spindle speed I can increase. I have not in messed with the feed speed. But I can also decrease it down lower. Get back to where I was. Notice, you'll notice if you look closely that the level it's on right now is starting down the the, uh, the sides. I put those sides as square in there so I could hold it in the the four jaw chuck on the uh, blade when we go to bore and thread it. its last pass through the mill now it's going to go to a ball in mill to the finishing roughing. Excuse me, that was the roughing.
Thank God my ears. Well, we're almost finished with it. Got a little bit more to go. Well, folks, before I end the video, I wanted to answer a few questions that I know people have. Yes, I am the world's worst CNC programmer. Can't do much about it except try and learn. And that's the reason I used old M8 in the first place. I needed a project to, to stretch my abilities a little bit. Uh, I was using old Bobcad to, to, to program it and Frankly, I could use the more advanced programming engine in there. Well, one of the things that you're going to say is why I, why I milled it in different steps with different step overs. I could not for the life of me get this machine to run and just circle and just keep going like this. It would go back and forth in the programming. The only way I could get it any closer was to tell it, and this is weird, that it was a five inch piece of stock. And then it would have cut air for half a day. But, uh, and a few friends of mine looked at it and they found the same thing. So I, I put that down to not having enough flatland tool pass in Bobcat. Thus, it went slow this way. Uh, if I were doing this for a job, I'd lose my shirt. But it worked out. I learned a lot of things about how I could make the larger programs work in M8, and I'm happy I did it. I've got two pieces here that I can practice with, and that's the whole reason I wanted to use M8. So, you know, I could have made that quickly on a manual mill. But then I wouldn't have anything to practice with except the $145 piece of bronze. So I wanted some practice parts and my machinist wax and me get along real well in that regard. So I made the program, figured out all its problems and got it to run. It looks slow on parts of it, but uh, especially on the wax parts because I was only taking 30 thousandths of an inch deep cuts, mainly to get these steps where they weren't too big. And uh, also, uh, I had a long stick out bit so I could mill, mill all five sides at the same time. And I just didn't want to take too an aggressive cut. What else did I see wrong in the video? Probably everything, but it worked out. The next step is to take these and we'll put them on my uh, do-all bandsaw and cut the bases off and then mill the bottom part flat. We'll have to put a couple holes in the bottom of them so it bolts up. Got to mill this little pocket for the oil into the side of them. We'll probably just only do that on this one. These two mainly I wanted so I could practice my left hand Acme threading, which I haven't done in 20 years. Machine wax is cheap. As you can see, I got a whole bunch of it to uh, melt back down. No problem. It's about all. Stay tuned for the next couple of videos where we cut off all the bases and bore them and face them and do all this. We're going to be doing most of that at Don's shop. Don's doing okay. We've had an uptick in COVID around here, so Don's been kind of playing it safe. I went over and saw him the other day. He's working on a sandblast machine, and he stood 20 feet away from me, and I waved at him and gave him, threw his parts at him. He's doing okay. When we get a break in the COVID around here, we'll start doing stuff together again. Thanks for watching. Hope you like it.